Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex from Xtrades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It was very interesting. And if you tuned in last week, we actually had some really good setups. The previous weeks, I feel like they, they weren't as good as this week. Because this week, we found Roku calls and Roku just blasted off. NVIDIA puts did really good. Even Google pulled back a little bit and Oracle also pulled back a little bit before just rallying straight to the upside. So there was opportunities to make money this week, especially off the setups that we were looking at last week. And the spine QQQ also moved pretty good. Decent volatility, even though the VIX is low, there's been decent range. So next week it's gonna be even wider in terms of range. We have a lot of data this week. So let's go ahead and get into the economic calendar. You could see Monday, the federal budget has come out. This is not a, really a market mover. Never seen it move the market. Most importantly, Tuesday, June 13th, we do have the Consumer Price Index, Core CPI, CPI year over year, and Core CPI year over year. So this is the most important. And then Wednesday, arguably the most important overall, we do have the Producer Price Index. We got Core PPI, PPI year over year. Also do have the FOMC meeting. So Jerome Powell will be speaking live at 2.30 Eastern. So this is going to be huge. And it's crazy because the CPI data comes out and then instantly the next day we go straight into the FOMC meeting. So the Federal Reserve is going to be talking and they're going to be deciding if they're going to pause or if they're going to do another rate hike. So we'll have to see how that goes. I'm pretty sure the odds of them pausing are pretty high according to the federal funds futures. And the chance for a rate hike is actually pretty low, maybe in the 20s or so, 20 percentile. So we'll see how that goes. Thursday, just your regular initial jobless claims. We got the retail sales. This is this can be a little market mover. We got the import price index. Never really seen this move the market. The Empire State Manufacturing Survey, I've actually seen this move the market. It depends on how extreme it is. And then also the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Survey. So these can move the market. It just depends on how extreme, if it's you know in line or if it's way over. So we'll have to see. Friday, we have Fed Christopher Waller speaking and then consumer sentiment. So consumer sentiment comes out 30 minutes after the bell and it, it can definitely move the market. We've seen some pretty big rallies and drops just off the consumer sentiment data. So that's for the data. Let's go ahead and get into the setups. All right. And for the first one here, we're looking at DVN. So this is a energy play. You can see we got a test one, you got test two, three, four, almost a test five here and even a sixth test before breaking out finally. So DVM was able to break out of this downtrend line. So it's looking like it could go bullish. It will have to get back over 50.17. And you can see that 50.17 level comes from right here. We can even add an alert and we can just put breakout. So we'll create that. We'll wait for it to get back over that as a signal. That would kind of confirm a double bottom. If you didn't know, your double bottom is not confirmed until it gets over the resistance line. Usually it'll like back test and then it can march higher. So your double bottom doesn't start down here. This is just, you know, this is just your bottom. This is your support. The pattern actually gets confirmed over the resistance. So that's just a little rule of thumb. I used to think the double bottoms just started instantly when you see a bounce off support, but that's actually not true. So I learned that over the years and it's important to wait for that confirmation before, you know, calling it a double bottom. So your 5017 is pretty much your level of confirmation. It looks like you do have some resistance here. We can move this down a little bit. At 5203, there's a little pivot point right here where it rejected pretty hard. So I'd imagine that's probably the maximum price target I can put it for right now, assuming it gets over 5017. So DVN here looking good for calls, but like I said, set that alert, wait for it to trigger and then maybe you can jump in. If you were to get in right here, you are entering a little premature because it's still under resistance. So if you want to be safe, wait for a little more confirmation, wait for this double bottom to get confirmed, wait for that 5017. And then another reason why the list is a little short this week, you can see DVN, RCL, DAL are only set up. So there's only three this week. And the reason for that is because of this data dump in the FOMC meeting. It makes holding overnight a little bit more risky. Honestly, the SPY and QQQ and the indexes are great to trade when we have data dumps and they, you know, suit my needs for trading. So I don't even really pay attention too much to individual tickers during these data dumps and big data weeks or really any big event risk because the indexes are great to day trade and they also have a lot of range. So you can, you know, you can trade those and make pretty good money on it. And the SPY and QQQ is just great. To trade overall it follows patterns good it follows technical analysis good so i like to focus on those during the big event days and less on individual tickers but i mean it just depends so that's my reasoning why this list is maybe a little bit shorter this week and usually i do have less setups when these big data dumps happen and when these big events come 
And that's just kind of my reasoning for that. So DVN here looking at calls, wait for that level to get broke and you could see 52.03. Next, we're going into RCL. So this is actually another longer term 61.8 Fibonacci play. I've been finding these a little bit more recently because a lot of stocks have retraced these massive retracement levels from high to low and they hit the 61.8 and a lot of times they'll see resistance. So you can see that in the past I had resistance here. It kind of got over it briefly. So it's not like directly off the 61.8, but it's the general area. So that's just kind of a, an example of a 61.8% rejection. This is actually from its all time high level down to its low in March. So this is COVID lows. And I've actually provided a couple examples of, you know, 61.8 play in a down measure on previous videos. I recommend going to read about it a little bit because I won't have the examples in this video, but when you do have a down measure like this, you're looking for rejections. Usually you can look for support as well, but the 61.8 is the most sought after Fibonacci play. So the 61.8 is great for rejections when you're doing a down measure. And it's also great for bounces if you're doing a Fibonacci up measure in an uptrend. So this is an overall downtrend and this is our 61.8 play. So this is actually a pretty good resistance area. I'm going to be looking for puts on this is so actually probably be pretty good for a swing months out like way way further out to deal with any event risk for the fomc because i mean anything can happen it could you know shoot up another two to five percent and with shorter term contracts you're not going to be able to manage that as well if you were to just go further out give it some time to make some resistance and it could pull back into the 50 percent which can be a first price target if you want to go more short term and you're looking at scalps Obviously, you might want to wait for it to get under this little Thursday low. It's going to be at 90.11. So that's kind of just a little base candle, nothing serious. But if it gets under that, you do have a whole buy imbalance, a bunch of bullish candles that could get filled back up to the downside. If you don't have any base or support right here. You have nothing. It's just all buy imbalance and likely that could get filled back up to the downside. If that 90.11, you could probably just round it down to 90 flat. But that would just kind of be your scalp levels if you were looking to day trade puts. Like I said, this is a longer term 61.8 Fibonacci level. So it could take time to play out. You know, this could not be ready for put scalps yet. And it could be more ready for starting to build a longer term position a couple months out. Give us some time to make resistance. So RCL here looking at puts. There's really only that 50% retracement as a potential support area. You can see it rejected here, kind of bounced right there as well. And then there's a little resistance area here at 81.16. And that's really that all that it has in this recent area. This is all by imbalance, like I said. So we'll need to get under that 90.11 and it could, you know, fill back down pretty aggressively. Just depends on the sentiment. You might want to see the VIX come back up, especially get over 15. My major level is obviously VIX getting over 20. That's when I know, you know, the markets could start pricing and fear to the market, but we're not even close to that. So volatility is kind of dead right now. So you do have to be careful with that. Like I said last week and the week prior, if you're going to trade puts, take profit quick on short term contracts or just buy further out and deal with any upside risk. And you will have plenty of time to build a position, hold through any upside risk. And also they're not as volatile. So just apply the same rules with scalps, put scalps or day trades, you know, just take those quick profits on the little dumps if you get them. Otherwise, you know, just keep your stops tight or buy time. Simple as that. So RCL here, looking at puts. All right, and next we're going into another one week time frame setup. So this is a longer time frame setup. You can see we're on the one week chart here. You got a test one, you got a test two, you got a test three. DAL here is coming up for a test four off this downtrend line. And you can see also this one week 200 SMA, this, these little dots, the red and green dots. This is a 200 simple moving average. So this is a longer term. 200 moving average you can see it's been clear resistance before you got uh, rejections of the general area here you get a rejection here you got a strong rejection here and it almost tapped it right here but didn't tap it directly but either way it stayed under this 200 sma pretty steadily so you know you do have to be careful with that if you're trying to go long i personally if you want to go long i would wait for it to break out of the downtrend i'm going to be looking at puts on this just because we have clear reactions to the 200 sma prior you do have this resistance at 40 33 which are relatively close to i mean we're right around the 40 range and also you got this downtrend line on the one week if we zoom to the one day chart you can see this is a massive rally based drop supply zone and you can see it actually wicked, wicked straight off of that and the downtrend line from the one week I was just showing you. This is not your standard supply candle that's a bullish base candle like I've showed you in my supply and demand videos. This is actually considered a hidden 
supplies zone because it's a big red candle, but you still do the same thing open to high for your zone. So it's a rally base drop with a heavy sell inbound. So this is a clear area of resistance. And that's probably why you see this big, strong upper shadow wick pushing down to the downside. So it got all the way up here and then ran down into the close and closed about here. So DAL, another probably longer term put, put swing a couple months out. If you were to scalp this, obviously same rules, just take profits quick on dumps and keep your stops tight because volatility is still relatively low and dip buyers have been showing up like no tomorrow. So to reduce that risk, you could just go further out, deal with a little bit of upside risk. And then obviously your risk off is just over 40, 40, 33 over that resistance. And that would also confirm over the downtrend line we were just looking at. So if it were to break over that, break over the downtrend line, break over the 40, 33 and break over the one week 200 SMA that I showed you, that would be your risk off for puts. So that's for DAL looking pretty decent here. All right, and next we're going into the indexes. So the first we're going to go over the SPY. You can see I had this supply zone last week. We kind of just traded inside of it, went up a little bit further and actually hit the top of it. So we never invalidated this one week supply zone because we never got over with a closing candle with a one week candle. So it still could be a potential resistance, obviously hasn't really reacted to the supply zone yet. It just traded through on this one week candle. And then we just traded through it last week as well. So this could you know, take a little bit more time to build a rejection candle or build any sort of sell pressure. And that could be from you know the data on the FOMC before we even see that. Another crazy thing here, we did retrace to the 61.8% retracement. So you can assume from all time highs down to 2022 lows, we have retraced 61.8% of the losses already. And like I said prior, the 61.8 FIB level is called the golden, the golden ratio. And it is the most sought after FIB level that most people look for because it has the best reactions. I don't know why, it just works. Could be mass psychology, everybody looking for the same thing. And that plays into the supply and demand. And when everybody's trying to sell at the same spot, take profit at the same spot, go short at the same spot, it creates sell pressure. And it could be algorithms as well, you know, just machine learning algorithms that are programmed to sell or, you know, see resistance or buy over the 61.8 as a breakout level. The 61.8 level is huge. So we will want to see a rejection candle of some sort to confirm that it's reacting to this level. And it's same thing on QQQ a couple weeks ago, it's also at the 61.8. And Google as well last week, is also at the 61.8, it saw a little bit of resistance there. So I wanna see more of that, but I would not go long here. Honestly, I would need to get over the supply and make a base on top of it, and then it could march higher, but it does have to get over you know, 431, 432 or so, which is the supply zone high, and that would confirm that it could go higher. Otherwise, this, this zone is a no-no. And honestly, I'd probably be looking at puts at this area for a swing just because it's the 61.8% retracement and there's great risk to reward. And obviously your risk off, you know, probably like 435 or so. On the one day, you can see there's really no setup. You just kind of had a little base out and then we ran up a little bit on Friday and then actually sold back off and closed flat. So it closed slightly above the 61.8, but if it goes back under that and breaks this little short-term base that we based off all week. So the spy literally went nowhere all week. We actually didn't even really move till Friday. We had a nice little 0.6 day here. We will need to get under 425.82, which is that base low. So if we can get under that level, that could confirm a reversal. We'll even add an alert, put breakdown at this level. So at 425.82 is that level of focus. It will need to get under that to go lower. And like I said, the supply zone high, 432, it does need to break over that. You can also see there's a little gap here, nothing crazy, it's kind of a small little gap. So it's not a huge gap by any means, but it is there. So, I mean, that could try to fill eventually. I would not keep it really too much in focus. Just keep that 425.82 level in focus, make sure we get under that and it could signal a reversal. Closest demand zone is obviously down here. It's gonna be about 418s or so, 419s. And that's that rally base rally zone. So that's the closest demand zone. This is probably where I'd be looking to buy calls. Otherwise, you know, you could maybe try to scalp off 425 support if it gets back down there or just wait for, you know, the 432 breakout and you could try there. Obviously really risky after all of that, you know, after this huge move that we've already run up, but right now it's still inside supply. You know, we're not that close to support and it's kind of just mid range. So really no trade on this at the moment. You can make day trades work even if it's in the mid range on the one day time frame, 
but you will need to use like Camarilla pivots or just use short term supports and stuff. Right now for daily levels, your 425, 82 and the 432, that's that's your range and we're right in between that. So you'll want to wait for a signal, wait for it to get to one of those areas first, maybe before, you know, making a trading decision on higher time frames. As for the SPY, just going to be looking, waiting for a little bit more data. All right. And next we're going into the QQQ. So I actually played off of this. I took some calls at this demand as a hedge pretty much because I still have July puts that I'm holding. I still feel pretty good about a pullback eventually. Might need to roll them out a little bit longer, but they're still, you know, over a month on those. So giving it some time. And I did pull back very heavily and they started coming back up. But once I saw we pulling into this rally base rally demand, I had a really strong feeling that it would just bounce back up because the VIX is so low. So we bought literally right around the close, right at demand. I don't remember what strike we did, but we took some calls maybe about seven days out, just held them overnight and then sold at the open when we started moving up. So that worked out pretty good. And that just shows you the power of supply and demand zones. It's a rally based rally zone. We will need to get under that. And I've been saying that in the chat and in the X-Trades Discord, it has to get under 345, which is this demand zone low area. It has to get under that to go lower. Right now, there is a small fresh supply zone right here at about 354. And the top of that area is, you know, 357.50. And you can see it actually rejected off that. We even traded off that on Friday, I believe. We took QQQ puts, you know, right around this resistance and dumped. And I think I sold it like VWAP. So I didn't get too much out of it. Maybe got like maybe 25% or something, if I remember correctly. And look, it just totally dumped. So I think these ran 100% plus after that. But either way, I was just using the VWAP as a price target. But you can see this 357.50 is a pretty big resistance. There's a big reaction. This 15 minute candle, almost half a percent dump. So that's huge. So price clearly reacting to that area. It's definitely a supply zone, even though it's kind of tight here on the daily. This is your supply. This is your demand. So this is the range currently. But if you want to get bullish, you want to wait for it to get back down to demand. You're going to get calls there or you're going to be waiting for the breakout over 357.50. So it'll have to get over 357.50. It'd have to break out of that, make a base off that in order to go higher. Just a classic break and retest of structure. And that could take it higher. Otherwise, this is kind of a no-no zone. You could honestly look at shorts here just because we're still inside supply and there's still a little bit lower before demand. So it would just have to make a random base area in, in the middle here to actually have support. Otherwise, there's nothing until, you know, demand down here. So this is also mid-range and might need a little bit more data before you make a decision you know, on the one day time frame in terms of day trading. So that's your levels of focus, just the 357.50 and your demand zone loan at 340, 346.50 or so. You could just run it down to 345, honestly. That'd probably be a psychological level. If it can get under 345, this big buy imbalance candle would likely fill back up. There's also a gap below here. And that would also take you back under your 61.8% retracement. We can even zoom out a little bit here. On the one week, you can see we're slightly over the 61.8. So if it stays over this long enough, you know, it could keep going higher. So it does have to get back under that on the one week time frame. Obviously, just one or two, you know, weekly candles, really not enough data to say that it's just going to break out of the 61.8. We will need a little bit more evidence that it's making a base here, nice structure. And then it, you know, it could go for another wave up. But otherwise, one day it kind of stalling out here. It wasn't able to get over 357.50 and it bounced off demand. So this is your trading range at the moment. So that's for QQQ. Maybe just wait on this one. All right. And next we're going into the IWM. So last week, this 50% retracement was in focus. Pretty much established this is strong support. So it had a bounce here, it had a bounce here, it had a bounce here. Had a small bounce here and another bounce here. So it's about four or five 50% retracement bounces off these Fibonacci levels. My max price target was the 38.2 at 187.63. I said this would likely be bullish just because it's, you know, holding up structure good. It's kind of oversold on the one day time frame, and it's just not giving up the 170s. So you kind of just had to come to that conclusion. Another signal we had was this daily close over the 200 SMA. Also a daily close over 179.82. It was able to hold that and look, it just ripped straight into our 38.2 and found resistance there. So simple as that. Just use some fibs last week. Use this as evidence of support. Use this as evidence of a breakout level. Use the 200 SMA as evidence of a breakout level. Use the 38.2, which is the next one week Fibonacci level as a price target. And you can see perfect resistance there. So that's why the max price target for that was right there. This week, I feel like the risk to reward for calls isn't as good. Obviously, it will have to get over the 38.2, maybe make a base off that. This area is kind of supply stacked, so it had trouble here. 
had trouble here and also had trouble here. So this could be a tough area to get through. Honestly, I would probably be looking at put scalps on this, but I don't even know if I like a setup on this right now. It looks like it might just try to make a higher low here and come back up and test the 38.2. If you were to take puts, it would have to get under Friday's low at 184.45. We can even set an alert, put breakdown. And that could signal, you know, a little reversal under Friday's low. But like I said, you know, 38.2 is resistance for now. And also we're over the 200 SMA, so it's kind of risky to short. But if you were just scalping or something, I could understand under that Friday low of 184.45. I don't want to buy calls here. I need to see a little bit more of a base get made. My ideal buy zone for calls would probably be if it pull back, you know, into the 200 SMA or if it came back down to 179.78 or, you know, 180 flat or so, it can make a base and bounce from there. Otherwise, just wait for it to get over the 38.2. Honestly, it could try to make a base off Friday's low if it can hold that up too and show a day or two of making a base above that level. That could be a good signal to go back up. But I feel like this isn't the greatest spot. There's really no support here. You don't have a base. You don't really have anything over here. You just have that 38.2% resistance. And that's really about it. So really nothing on IWM here this week. I know that kind of sucks, but you know, if you do go to the daily time frame, you kind of do have to be more selective if you're gonna day trade those levels just because they're I mean they're massive levels and they're very important. So if you zoom down a little bit, you can, you know, use camera la pivots. I could show you an example. If you really don't have a setup on the daily time frame, you can use these. These reset every single day. I recommend going to watch my video on it. It's called Day Trading with Accuracy Camarilla Pivots. Go check it out. There's a strategy behind it. There's two longs and two shorts, but they reset every day and they're way different than, you know, your standard one day levels because they're just intraday levels. So they're, you know, more short term and they can get you kind of in and out, get you a quick entry, get you a quick exit and you'll be out before the end of the day. So if you can't really find levels on the one day, I recommend using these and that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing all week as usual. So I do trade off the daily levels, but I also do day trade off of these. This is my main strategy. So just kind of a, as an example, one example of a setup on camera pivots is called a S3 to R3 long. You can even just scalp these. You can see it pulled in S3, held it up really nice, had a short term bounce before going lower. So you could have scalped off of this S3 perfectly and you know, maybe sold a little bit above the pivot level if you're just scalping. Another setup that it had, was this S4 breakdown. So S4 with a S5 price target. I would really recommend going into my Camarilla video and watching it. I can explain it way more in depth than I will here. And it's very in depth and it shows you the price target, shows you the entry and the stop losses for all four setups. So go check it out. Just go to the Xtrades YouTube channel and you will find it. So that's for the IWM. Like I said, you don't really have any daily levels of support here or anything. You just have the 38 point two percent retracement as resistance so you may have to go down to the shorter term time frames to find levels to day trade off of otherwise you know it's still trading over the 200 sma this could signal you know a short term reversal off the 38.2 it would need to get back over that in order to go higher i really can't say where you know where i think it's going to go this week because i really don't have enough data you know what i mean there's just there's no base there's no breakout it already happened here you do have this short term resistance but it's also just fresh breakout of structure. So, you know, naturally, I think it could go a little bit higher, but that's just going to depend on the data and FOMC. So IWM here, need a little bit more from it. All right, and next we're going into the VIX. So it broke under this 410 support that I had. I showed in the last video. The 1410 level came from this 2021 low, and that's why I, that was the maximum I could put it if it were to keep going lower. I figured it would try to bounce about there just because it's a pretty decent bounce spot from 2021. It was able to break under that, which is crazy. So now we're just at three year VIX lows. I really don't have any more price targets below, honestly, for this. I feel like it's going to try to shoot back over 14s, to be honest, just because this is looking mad oversold. And when it gets super cheap to hedge, people will start, you know, picking up puts and it will, you know, pretty much ramp the VIX back up because people are trying to buy insurance on their ports. So same level of focus. I would wait for a signal over 1410. If we can get over 1410 and then get over 1473 as well, which is also another 2021 level and then get over 1553. That's a good signal for volatility to come back. Otherwise, nothing really here. I mean, you know, it speaks for itself. Volatility is very low, kind of dries up ranges sometimes makes things feel a little bit slower, but it also kind of resembles a calm before the storm when it gets this low, because eventually it does pop back up and it tries to come back up for a mean regression when it gets this low. 
But like I said, you're gonna be waiting for the signal over 1410. I wouldn't be, you know, doing anything else. I'm definitely not buying calls for a swing on SPY. So I'm, I'm not gonna be looking for it to go any lower. I don't really have any price targets or anything below that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna wait for that signal over 1410 and 1473 and also 1553 as your daily levels those are the levels of focus in order to get some volatility to come back and a signal for puts otherwise like i said kind of speaks for itself volatility is very low just wait for the signals over that and you know you can start looking at puts you could even maybe start adding here for a further out swing for spy puts just because volatility is so low and it's so cheap i mean why not might as well hedge your portfolio if you're majority long or you know if you Want to finally take some stabs at some shorts. This is a good area because the VIX is so damn low. So I don't have too much for the VIX this week. Just the signal over 1410, then 1473, and then 1553. And then this is all free space up to 1831. There's really nothing here. So if it gets over those and gets back over this major 1553, that's a great signal you know, for volatility to pick back up. So especially watch that level. I would mark these on your chart. And next we're going into the DXY. So this is actually a new little, it's actually a new little support area right here that is trying to bounce off of. I had a very strong green day here up about you know half a percent you can see a strong candle it will need to go back under that 103.38 level in order to sell back off right now the market doesn't care too much about the dollar but these big moves here this big down day it helped you know equities a little bit so like i said we'll need to get back under that 103 103.38 so if we can get back under that and sell off that could be good for the market i feel like it's not really caring about the dollar though this little bullish candle here it was up almost half a percent on this day the market actually rallied like 1.4 percent so it was up about over one percent even with the dollar up half a percent and i consider the dollar up half a percent up or down that's a pretty decent currency volatility and it can definitely move the markets and usually when the mar uh, the dollar's up like this it will bring equities down and when the dollar's down like this candle it will bring equities up so really just depends i feel like it just needs to get under that 103.38 as a good signal you know maybe for the market to go higher but i mean i showed you the technicals on spy it's at that 61.8 level and it's kind of risky so i'm not sure if it'll go really too much higher before finding a pullback at least you know just for a little breather then maybe you know it could keep going up but i mean it just depends the dollar is going to move huge this week due to the fomc and the cpi the dollar and currencies are very very sensitive to data so just focus on that 103.38 as long as that's holding up you know it could spook the markets if the dollar keeps holding up this level so i've showed you in the past that 103 is a huge level the reason for that is the covid 2020 highs so the dollar peaked out here at 2020 during covid and that's why it's a pretty big you know important level and i consider the dollar over that i consider that elevated to be honest so we will need to get back under 103 flat as a longer term level but right now, you know, this 103.38 is your short term bounce level. So you want to focus on that. And then there's pretty much a little weak rejection at 104.70. So there's really nothing here. It could bounce. And honestly, if it bounces back up, that could bring the market down if it decides it wants to react to currencies. Like I said, it hasn't really been reacting. And I've talked about this in other videos. When the dollar broke out here and went up pretty heavily, stocks did not care. They kept going up and usually it inverses it. So you have to be careful with that take it with a grain of salt maybe wait for a proper correlation and wait for a clear sign that the spy is inversing the dollar before using this as you know an indicator to make trade decisions with you might want to see the vix and the dollar together kind of go up and then the market sell off that's a good signal that you know indicators are working normally otherwise you know if you're just kind of using it by itself it may not be as reliable right now so just be careful with that and then keep these two levels of focus for next week that's the video guys hope you guys enjoy make sure you like comment and subscribe i'm gonna get this chopped up edited and sent out love you guys and i'm out